Thanks for staying with us. Uh, for our second hot topic, we're going to uh, revisit the end bad governance. Justice Emeka Nwite of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has granted bail to the 10 end bad governance protesters arraigned on September 2, 2024, on a six count charge of treason, incitement to mutiny, uh, intimidation of the president, destabilization of the country, and destruction of public property. At Wednesday's proceedings, the trial judge, Justice Nwite, after hearing submissions from the defense team led by Marshal Abubakar and the prosecution, represented by Simon Love, uh, on the bail applications filed on behalf of the defendants, found reasons with the submission of defense counsel and granted bail to the defendants in the sum of 10 million naira each. That is 100 million for 10 of them. Among others, the court held that the protesters must produce one surety each in the same amount, while the sureties must be resident in Abuja. Besides, the sureties must be property owners in Abuja and must deposit documents of properties to the court in addition to swearing to the uh, to swearing affidavit of means. Well, our guest this morning is Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner. Good morning, Elvis, and thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Ten Nigerians accused of treason because they went for bad and bad governance protest. Let's hear your, your point of view from the legal angle. Well, uh, I mean, uh, much has been said about... Um, the you know, you know, inappropriateness and the fact that uh, it is ab absolutely uh, very wrong for the United States to prefer choosing charges against post protesters. In fact, it doesn't even sound right uh, to hear that protesters have been uh, charged for serious offenses such as uh, treason or treasonable felony. Um, you know, one would have thought that the Nigerian government would rather look into. Uh, the issues that, you know, warranted the need for Nigerians to express themselves. Um, uh, it is, well, it can't be said enough that the right to uh, protest is a constitutional right. And it's the only way that people participate in the uh, governance, you know, process. You know, and you cannot have a good governance unless you know, the people are able to express themselves, who are people who participate. Um, you know, so it's, it is quite frankly um, sad for democracy to hear that, that people are being charged for treason. Uh, but it's, it's good news uh, to hear that um, the, the court has granted them bail. I don't forget that typically uh, bail, not, bail can only be granted in exceptional circumstances when somebody has been charged uh, for serious capital offenses such as uh, treason. Uh, so for the court to have granted bail, um, what it simply means that the court has looked at the proof of evidence, that is, the, the, the materials that the prosecutor has produced before the court. Uh, you know, and the court has seen that perhaps it is not witty enough, and th that's why bail was considered. Governorally, it is um, only in exceptional situations that bail can be granted in offenses such as uh, treason. And so, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's gladdening to hear that uh, bail was granted, and it might also but trust the fact that the government perhaps does not have serious materials uh, placed before the court, uh, you know, to prima facie um, establish or, you know, should demonstrate that the, the, the offense of which uh, they are being charged, um, you know, there's some seriousness to it. Um, you know, but a lot of people have uh, expressed concern about uh, the terms of bail. For example, I think um, it's in the sum of 10 million each, and then the fact that um, uh, they, they need to have a shorty that has property in Abuja. Um, you know, I mean, it's a matter before the court, one cannot really um, comment on, you know, uh, the appropriateness or otherwise of the bail that was granted in this particular case. But speaking generally about the bail procedure, uh, like I said, it's, you know, always very difficult to grant bail capital offenses. But that notwithstanding, the law under the Administration of Criminal Justice Act that bail should not be excessive. Uh, you know, bail should not be granted in such a manner as to about to a denier. Because, um, you know, if you ask yourself, uh, the current um, attitude of the courts to the grant of bail, you know, by requiring people to own properties in Abuja, in Lagos, and all that, you now ask yourself how many Nigerians uh, have the capacity to own property in Lagos and Abuja. 
uh, is it only somebody that has a property in Lagos or Abuja that can vouch uh, for somebody? And, you know, so these are some of the issues that people have expressed. But, you know, like I said, it's, it's good news that they have got a bill. But how good is the news if the bill conditions are too much? You know, you, uh, you're not only having properties in Abuja, you are living in Abuja. So if you have properties and you live in Lagos, you don't qualify. And then if you live in Abuja, in that property that you're they're talking about, you're, you'll be ready to hand over the documents uh, to the authority. When you know that uh, for one flimsy reason or the other, your property might just go because uh, you have uh, decided to go and, uh, and build those people. 10 million Naira. Where will they raise that kind of money to go to go and uh, build themselves, and where will they find the surety that will will undertake? Well, yeah. Is is that not denial um, that you mentioned? At first, you know, we, like I said, you know, we can only really, I can only really, um, you know, talk about you know the terms that this particular court has granted, but I can talk I can speak generally about you know uh, bail terms. Uh, first, like I said, you know, in capital offenses, the courts hardly even grant bail in the first place, so you would expect that the terms of bail will be a little bit stringent compared to what you normally find. But I, I find it very worrisome that our courts today, you know, uh, from my practice, has uh, imbibed the habits of, uh, you know, giving very stringent terms of bail by requiring people to have properties in, um, in Lagos and Abuja and other places. I think this is uh, worrisome. Um, I've seen a case uh, where the Court of Appeal wasn't very comfortable with his attitude. It's a position that bail should be granted in such a manner as not to amount to a denial. Because uh, we, in practice, we have seen instances where people have granted bail. They are not able to perfect the bail terms. They don't have people who have properties. But there are people uh, that could utterly stand for them that have the necessary, they are you know, very good Nigerians. Don't forget that the real essence of bail is to secure. Uh, the attendance of the accused persons in the next proceedings. Mm. So it shouldn't only be too stringent. And then again, don't also forget that, you know, I mean, everybody's presumed innocent until found guilty. So when you give serious conditions of bail that make that, you know, uh, that, the, the, that the accused persons cannot perfect, you know, in, 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 and then they are not, they are not have to be kept in, kept in prison because they are not able to perfect their bail, they are practically punishing them already. And for an offense that they may be found not to have committed. So uh, you are right that, you know, it's a challenge with the way and our courts today uh, give terms of bail. Then with the, in, in terms of the monetary terms, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to bring that money unless there is a specific order in the, in the, in the judgment or in the ruling uh, mandating the shorty to, to bring the money um, or pay it into, an interest, to pay into, into court. Usually, uh, it's just a bond. What it means is that if you are unable to produce um, the accused person in so cases or a trial, then you will, you will lose that bond. It means that you have to pay the government that money. It doesn't mean that you're going to pay it now uh, as you know as a as a precondition for the person's release, unless um, in some exceptional cases the court specifically makes uh, that order. But that notwithstanding, I agree that you know terms of bail uh, that we see today in our courts are worrisome and they are largely inconsistent uh, with the spirit and intent of uh, the relevant provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which clearly says that bail should not be excessive. And apart from the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the Constitution is there. The Constitution presumes everyone innocent. So if you give me terms of bail that I cannot fulfill and as a result of which I have to stay in jail or in prison, then that you have actually punished me. And then what if I'm, I'm not found uh, not guilty uh, eventually? Uh, so, you know, um, it is hoped that, and then there are options that are open to, um, uh, you know, the, the end bad governance protesters who have been granted bail. If they are unable to fulfill the terms of bail, they can actually apply for variation of the bail terms. And, you know, the law allows them to apply to the court to vary the terms, um, you know, and then they can show, um, you know, bring su sufficient material for the court that would justify the court. Uh, giving them more lenient uh, terms and conditions. That they can do. And if that fails, um, you know, they can seek uh, redress in, in, in the higher courts. But of course, we know how long these things take. And so what it simply means is that you will still be in jail for an offense that you may not uh, be found guilty for in the final analysis.
It's worrisome. Uh, but let's look at the, the accusations they, uh, that are leveled against them. Uh, one of them is that uh, they intimidated the president. Is that even a thing? Uh, they, they, they wanted to cause mutiny. They wanted to do this. But then I was interested in that intimidation of the president. Well, you see, quite frankly, um, it, is, it is very unfortunate that we have now weaponized and uh, weaponized treason charges in the country. We have trivialized it. It's a serious offense. This is an offense that tries death. And, you know, at the very least, uh, you know, a life imprisonment. And so you don't casually use these terms. Treason, if you look at the relevant law, it talks about levying war against the state. It talks about you know joining the enemy to levy war against the state, and it must be you know it must be calculated towards uh, overwhelming you know overhauling uh, overwhelming the, the, the state apparatus in terms of provision of security, and so it is not something that we should use carelessly. It's unfortunate that our political class over the years, uh, in order to give an excuse for their failures, we always want to blame uh, the opposition. Uh, for whatever uh, protests or whatever that is uh, that, that, that the Nigerians wants to make, and in, in 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 that wise they you know return uh, with all these oppressive uh, attempts. You know, it's basically an attempt to emasculate uh, opposition, to emasculate the people from expressing themselves, and it's quite uh, distasteful uh, to to say the least. And if you look at it um, globally and even within the Nigerian context. Resorting to filing treason charges, charges over, you know, a protest is often a sign that the government um, is failing, you know, and they, you know, it's often a sign that the government is no longer in touch with the people. It's often a sign that the government has lost uh, touch, and so in order to continue to impose themselves in power, they resort to all these, um, you know, treason and other, uh, you know, uh, very cruel cool tactics. Uh, which are democratic, you know, and and that's what that's what you get, you know. Now, you if if it is true, for example, that there were people who took advantage of the protest to commit offences, uh, riots, axing, or whatever it is. This, in cases like that, you can bring, you know, there are charges you can bring against them. It, it shouldn't be treason. Treason is something that is uh, is, is, is a very serious offence. You look at, you know, I I, I I look at the example of the US when. Some Trump supporters invaded the capital. You know, they even you know beat up people and all of that. I don't, I don't think treason charges were filed against them. Yes, there were charges filed against them for disobedience and all that. Um, and all, but the malicious damage of public properties and stuff. But you know, to say that somebody you know is attempting to <laughs> overthrow the, the, the president or to intimidate the president, it's, it's really. Uh, um, um, you know, it's a sign that we are perhaps, uh, you know, uh, running ourselves into a dictatorial system of government because the people should be able to spread themselves. And uh, rather than, um, you know, invest all this energy and efforts in, you know, in the search for fictitious uh, treason, why don't you invest it on, you know, uh, doing what people are asking for? What is the, what is the big deal in asking for good governance? Good governance is a right that everybody should be entitled to. If you cannot give it, then you know, you know what to do, rather than uh, try to oppress the people who are asking for it. So it is very sad, and it's the sad commentary on our democratic experience that in, in the 21st century, 2024, we are still resorting to this uh, primitive, rather crude, and uh, quite frankly, a defe you know, defeating tactics of. Uh, uh, trying to emasculate the uh, expression of the people uh, using uh, treason. Yeah, having said that, let me, let me just ask you this question. How would you rate uh, the respect for human rights uh, in this present administration? The international community has even complained that they're trampling on the rights of the people, but this present administration is denying it and saying that uh, it is because the international community is misunderstanding. But you are Nigerian, you are a legal mind, and um, would like, I'd like you to, to describe the the respect to human rights or for human rights of this present administration by law? Well, I think, um, you know, first it is important to establish that good go you know, a, a fundamental aspect of good governance is respect for the rule of law. 
And respect for the rule of law includes the fact that people should be allowed to enjoy their fundamental rights as guaranteed by law. And so the moment you begin to try to prevent people uh, from enjoying the fundamental rights that are guaranteed by law, uh, you know, apart from the fact that you're not actually um, giving them good governance, you're also saying to the international community that you don't, you don't have regards for the rule of law. You know, and quite frankly, this administration has demonstrated, uh, particularly in the last couple of months, that it has no you know, serious regards for the rule of law. You can see it in their utterances. You can see it in the way in they have um, tried to emasculate labor, you know, uh, the arrest of uh, Ajero, uh, the invasion of Sarah's office, uh, you know, the systematic arrest of people who were involved in protest, and, uh, you know, all of these points quite clearly to the fact that this government appears to um, not to be, to be, to be uh, unable to guarantee uh, rule of law. And you know, and that the, the human rights records of the government, you know, it's actually not uh, not, not good enough. Um, one would have thought that being a government that is uh, led by someone who over the years has been involved in protests, has been involved in struggles for so-called human rights, uh, you know, one would have thought that you know this government would be more accommodating um, of the rights of people, more accommodating in protecting the rights. Of people, but unfortunately, it, it will appear that this government is not uh, 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 doing well in, in that regard. And, and a, again, we have seen that the government is not doing well in, in many respects, you know, economically, security. And so it is, you know, far worse now that we are also doing very badly uh, in terms of uh, uh, human rights. And uh, like, I, like, I, like I said earlier, it's a symptom of the government that has lost touch with the people. Once you have lost touch with the people, now you don't try to use force. To impose yourself to continue to maintain power, and, and that is what you get when um, you, that's what you do when you begin to resort to all of these tactics of filing treason charges, invading people's homes, invading uh, offices, you know, systematically arresting people at the airports, uh, you know, seizing international passports of Nigerians who wish to uh, travel simply because you don't uh, uh, like their views on issues. Um, I think this is very bad for this government. And I hope that uh, whoever, you know, has the ears of the president uh, would speak sense to him to see that, look, this strategy can only end in one thing. It can only end in failure, you know. And the only way you can get the people um, is to respect the rights of the people, is to, you know, offer, you know, some semblance of good governance. And, and um, you know, I, I would have thought that, for example, when the protesters... Uh, put forward uh, some uh, legitimate demands. Uh, you know, you look at some of those demands, and then you, you know you speak to the ones that you the government can urgently meet, and then put in place a, 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 a plan to resolve other issues. For example, cutting down on the cost of governance. You can't ask people to be patient. You can't ask people to be taking baby steps. You know, like uh, the president uh, is uh, uh, said to have said in one of his uh, interviews. Uh, you know, baby step of pains <laughs> when you are living large, when you are buying yachts, when you are buying houses for the vice president, when you are, you know, look at the people around you, they are all living ostentatiously. You know, look at the, the convoys of, uh, of, of, of ministers. We haven't seen anything about cutting down on the cost of governance. And this is, you know, you know, have to live, you know, uh, a good example. Beyond just be the rules. It's actually a vision that you share. And that vision, you, must, you yourself must leave it, and then you must be able to get the people to uh, leave it, and then you take them to your destination. You can't use force. You can't use the nations of your... This is 2024. There is no force in the world that can stand against the people. You can try it. You can succeed one way or the other, but at the end of the day, the people will eventually succeed. Mm. The people will uh, eventually defeat uh, tyranny and dictatorship. You know, even without military rule, the people stood up against... Uh, uh, violations of human rights. And so, you, how do you think you're going to survive and um, go scot free uh, by simply just violating the rights of people in the 21st in this century? You know, like you said, the international community are there the watching. I saw the 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 event that uh, Ajero was supposed to attend in the United Kingdom. Um, you know, the labor event, and, and I saw the, the views that were expressed there. You don't want that. This is a government that wants to attract investment. How do you attract investment? If it can be seen 
to be to, to have to, to have disregard, complete disregard for human rights. You can the Nigerian, Nigerian, Nigerian economy right now, you know, needs a lot of investment, needs partnerships like, uh, globally. But how do you do it if you can just descend into a uh, 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 dictatorship? So it is hoped that this government will retrace its steps, focus on what you know, the people want, you know, try to put the economy together. And then if you have a vision that Nigerians are not seeing right now, your role as a leader is to make them see it. You can't force us to see what you are seeing that we are not seeing. You cannot force us. Yeah. So right, yeah. right now, what we see is hunger. What we see is starvation. What we see is our uh, empty room. People cannot move from one place to the other. Well, um, I do hope that they will see this with us. I hope that when they see it, they will not just see our problems being solved with only rice. And uh, we've just seen, I've just seen a funny headline here. Wife of House of Reps member Trends, a bit reports, she shared sugar cane to empower youths in her community. So they are seeing a solution. And uh, what you solution know, it is, is, is to give us rice biggest, or sugar cane. Problem. Sugar this is the biggest problem of this, of this administration. Well. Uh, and we are seeing with the APC government since uh, 2015. This palliative system of governance <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a shame. That you think you can just offer palliative, I offer rice to people who or are sugarcane. systematically hungry, to people whose uh, income cannot take them home. Yes. You say you have increased uh, 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 salary to seven thousand. We are not paying that yet, but that amount now cannot fill my tank for for, for, for one day. So if I fill my tank with seventy thousand, and uh, it will take me around Lagos, you know, with my commitments for a week. So that means that I would have spent over two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand. To buy fuel alone. So what kind of what kind of what kind of what kind of what, 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 how do you want people to survive? So you can't force people if you don't fix the economy. Yes, then sorry. you should probably pack your mother and go. You can resign if you are incompetent to to fix it, or you know, and our Nigerian people will vote you out in the next election. You can't. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to force the people. Resignation in Nigeria is like asking a dog to lay a, a, a an egg or a goat to lay an egg. But we hope that they will sit up one day and recognize the fact that the people are the real employers of, of their own employers because we sent them to go and do what they're supposed to do and they're not doing it right now. But we'd like to thank you, Elvis, for coming on the show this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We've been talking with Elvis Asia, a legal practitioner. We were looking at uh, the NBAT governance people who were, um, have now been granted bail of 10 million naira each with sureties of like sum and who must own properties in Abuja and be ready to uh, give out the documents of these properties to the authorities. Well, let's see how the coming days play out. They've been accused of treason and intimidating the president very interesting well this is how we wrap it up on the show this morning we are glad that you were able to stay with us till this moment we hope that you rejoin us tomorrow for another edition of the program for now have a wonderful day my name is nyambu agaji